as you want. If you look at history, innovation doesn't come just from giving people incentives. It comes from taking environment where the ideas can come. Once again, a warm morning to us. रेस्पेक्टेड डायरेक्टर ईक्यूसी डॉक्टर पी ज्ञानशेखर सर रेस्पेक्टेड गेस्ट ऑफ दिस वेबिनार डॉक्टर प्रशांत आर नायर रेस्पेक्टेड हेच ऑफ वेरियस इंस्टीट्यूशन डायरेक्टर्स एंड ईक्यूसी कॉर्डिनेटर्स ऑफ वेरियस इंस्टीट्यूशन फैकल्टी मेबर्स एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स very warm welcome to all and good morning as per the nac the institution needs to display sensitivity to changing educational and social and marketing demands the institution is needs to gear to promote an ambience of creativity and innovation also it needs to adopt quality management strategies in all academic and administrative aspects the institutions also also needs to strive to promote value based education social social responsibility and responsibilities and making good citizens no institutions can keep one innovative practice as best practice for a longer period period of time and it needs to update and to continue in in our practice the best practice methods also needs to change with innovative innovative ideas and it should be incorporated in our methods of administration and academic aspects also so today's webinar topic is need of an hour need of hour the topic of uh, this webinar is quality benchmarking and innovative practices the this webinar is the 18th qws of our university on behalf of our, our faculty i wholeheartedly thank our director of iqac to give an opportunity to organize the webinar on behalf of our faculty we also needs to thank the team of administrative peoples from starting from our vice chancellor registrar and directors of our university and various iqac members iqac coordinators of our university and the whole uh, teaching and supporting faculties of our university who have worked untiring for the a grade accreditation by nac and these kind of quality webinar series is uh, plan to get better and highest grade in the forthcoming nac visit with this uh, small note i welcome our uh, chief guest and resource person dr prashant r nayar uh, vice chairman iqac amrita vidya uh, amrita vishwa vidyapeedam deemed to be university coimbatore and sar as a, having vast experience and very quality of uh, research and academic experiences so sir, sir on behalf of our university and on behalf of our college we wholeheartedly welcome you for this uh, uh, webinar sir thank you thank you very much next i would like to welcome our uh, director of iqac dr p nanasegaran sir he not he do no no need of any introduction because he is always in lead role to make quality in administration as well as academic series and on behalf of him only we we are known to how to work for the 
various rankings and accreditation in various uh, associations and uh, uh, apex bodies so thank you for uh, everything and welcome you for this uh, webinar sir next i would like to welcome all the hias of our university and the iqsc coordinators of various uh, institutions of our university and my dear faculty members and the participants i wholeheartedly welcome for this uh, quality webinar series quality benchmarking by in innovative practices thank you thank you sir let us now welcome the man who doesn't need any introduction and no among all of us for his wisdom and his knowledge with this quote i request professor dr p nyana shekar sir director of iqac naiga mission research foundation deemed to be university to deliver the keynote address thank you uh, a warm morning to all of you first of all let me wish a wonderful uh, new year 2023 for all the participants uh, let us uh, have our dreams of the future better uh, rather than uh, history of the past as said by thomas jefferson uh, let us dream high <laughs> as we have set the target for uh, uh, nac as 3.75 by 2027 uh see we are now halfway through last year we had fixed a target of 3.51 by 2022 uh wherein we reached 3.13 so now we have fixed a target of 3.75 by 2027 so the uh, third cycle of our assessment has started from the current academic year that is 22 23 so we have set a target we need to move towards the target that could be a dream but it's not uh, uh, no one thing which cannot be achieved it's easily achievable uh, when i look at the new year uh, no when a new year comes everyone takes some resolution right so similarly uh, one of my friends uh, he asked me what is your resolution for the new year i said i am going to reduce my weight i am going to go on a diet this happened on the new year eve usually that happens then he said oh that's wonderful what is the diet you are going to take i said that's a new year eve uh, whiskey could be fine sir what are you going to achieve uh, i have already achieved now i have lost 3 days so that is how we fix our targets and uh, the way we uh, plan and uh, process and execute the targets is where uh, no lies the result so today's topic if we take uh, benchmarking see recently nac has come out with uh, the you know it has opened uh, the treasure box uh, something which was kept secret for all these years now has been opened up the benchmarking figures of uh, assessment has been you uh, know released uh, for uh, general universities autonomous colleges and affiliated colleges they are to release for uh, health sciences uh, universities and health sciences institutions uh, so this is somewhere you uh, know uh, we know where we have to move so the benchmarks give us a, a real figure uh, to plan our targets to plan our process and also to plan how to execute the, the process and achieve the targets so benchmarking innovative practices again any practice you uh, know the achievement is what we need to look at if you look at sports the achievement is getting a first place or the gold medal or the championship so that way we should have something really fixed the passing an exam is easy but getting a gold medal is tough so always we should have a benchmark only then we can no go ahead with uh, our uh, achievements in sports 
uh, if you take benchmarking in all the sports, they have a minimum qualifying criteria, right? So people who qualify that criteria only, they can move forward in the uh, sports. Like in high jump, they have a minimum height to be jumped. So only then they are eligible. Otherwise, they will be disqualified. Similarly, benchmarking in quality also uh, we should uh, really have. That will really help us in achieving you know, higher targets and move towards quality you know, in education system. Now, when we look at uh, benchmarking, again, we need to look at people who have achieved, the achievers. So they should be looked as examples for achieving, and they should also be taken as benchmarking. So when we look at benchmarking of quality uh, institutions, a very few names come to our mind. So one of those few is Amrita. So Amrita is one institution which is a benchmark of quality education. So it's right, you know, we have someone from that sort of a quality institution for this webinar. Now again, benchmarking of resource people. Uh, if you look at resource people, again, uh, people like uh, Prashant Nair, uh, you know, if we need to give him an introduction, uh, we'll have to take the whole uh, two hearts to give introduction about it. Uh, the, his achievements and what he has done uh, runs into pages. Like his recent achievement uh, being uh, uh, selected as the uh, chairman of IEEE, one of the chapters. So he has plenty of achievements. He is a person who keeps uh, speaking a lot. Now, I've seen that he has been participating in plenty of webinars, conferences, workshops, uh, giving uh, you know, lectures on various topics, not just uh, quality alone. Uh, I think he is a computer person. So he has been participating in plenty of uh, workshops and seminars on you know, computer IT related topics also. So uh, it's really right. Uh, that we have uh, Dr. Prashant Nair as a resource person for uh, today's webinar. And uh, I'm happy that uh, the uh, Vinaya Mission College of Physical Education uh, has come forward to host this webinar uh, for quality webinar series. This is the 18th webinar. We just uh, started one year back and we have just completed a year uh, where we are now uh, on the 18th uh, webinar. And uh, this webinar series goes on and on. I want this to continue. Uh, this webinar series happens every alternate Saturdays. And uh, though we had some break in between, now we have started off and we are continuing. And we do hope these webinars will give, uh, will shed some light on uh, quality processes and quality procedures being followed across the country in education, which can be emulated and followed in our institution so that we can achieve the targets. Uh, with this, I wish this seminar, uh, webinar all the best. And uh, I once again uh, uh, wish all of you a wonderful uh, new year and uh, uh, Pongal to come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Assistant Professor Vinaya Mission College of Physical Education. It's my primary task honor to introduce our resource person for the JH Quality One Day National Webinar Series on Quality Benchmark by Innovative Practice Post by Vinaya Mission College of Physical Education. We are indeed privileged to have Dr. Prashant R. Nair, sir, as a resource person for this One Day National Webinar. He is working as a vice chairman. IQAC and Associate Professor in Computer Science and in Amrita School of Engineering. Vishwa Amrita Vishwa He is a person who has more than 22 years experience in teaching, research, mentoring, students, staff, training, consistency, and academic administration. Thank <laughs> you.
cycles of NAC aggregation, NPA aggregation, and NIRF ranking, and also served as a UGC nodal officer for the university. Under his guidance, Amla has secured a plus CGPA of 3.7 in third of NAC aggregation. And he has recently ranked as the top private university in India in both NIRF and international ranking since 2016. And he is served in a academic programs in various countries such as USA and Europe, University of California and Soviet University. He has written six books, two edited books, one book chapter, and he published more than 50 publications in reputed journals and conferences. He has mentoring the students team that won the prime international and national competitions like Smart India Hackathon, Rajasthan Hackathon, TCS Digital Twin Challenge, and represented India as a part of the National Hackathon team for Singapore India Hackathon, and was facilitated by Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji. He has also ranked as a top innovative mentor in India by Atal Innovation Mission in NATA for two consistent year and coordinator AIMS activity in Tamil Nadu as regional mentor for change. With this free introduction, I would like to welcome Dr. Prashant A. Nair, sir. Sir, please, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, respected uh, Director IQAC of the Vinayaga Missions University, uh, Dr. B. Nyaneshekar, uh, Principal of the uh, College of Physical Education, Dr. Sharavanan, uh, and all the uh, IQAC coordinators from various uh, institutions under the, uh, the premier Vinayaga Missions group. Uh, a very good uh, morning to all of you. I wish you a very happy uh, new year and an advance wishes, Pongal uh, Nalvartikal. Uh, so, uh, today uh, I am uh, very happy to be here to talk to you about uh, benchmarking and some of the innovative practices. I may, if, if I may, I may call innovative practices as best practices because, you know, best practices are innovative, innovative practices mostly become best practices. So, I will use that in a more of an either or uh, mechanism of having uh, best practices uh, what is a best practice? How do you uh, define a best practice? How do you measure a best practice? How do you benchmark with a best practice? Uh, I couldn't agree more with uh, uh, Dr. Nyanashekar. I'm very happy to see that you know you are having a quality webinar series. This again is a good a best practice because to be very honest, I work with so many institutions, uh, and uh, I'm very glad to see that the uh, IQAC of Vinayaga Mission University is having such a good initiative to, uh, you know, to spread the word about quality. Uh, you know, believe me, majority, probably nine out of 10 institutions, IQAC only wakes up a few months before the re-accreditation, uh, moves from pillar to post, uh, collecting the data, collating the data, consolidating the data, curating the data, goes into overdrive, submitting the AQAR for the last four years, it used to be allowed, now it is not anymore. You cannot do that anymore. You have to do it, uh, the filing at least one or two years before you have to file the, uh, all the AQARs and uh, stuff like that. Interestingly, you know, I am, uh, this is my, um, um, uh, so important I feel, you know, I, I couldn't agree more with um, Dr. Nyanishekar that you need to also plan to, you know, plan present for the future. but. Uh, what you are doing in the present is very important because that reflects on the future. And there are clear indications with NEP and all. Everything, all the uh, ranking, accreditation, uh, statutory, regulatory agencies are all coming under one umbrella. The NEP is talking about that one umbrella where, all, where there's, there are four pillars. Now, when it is going to happen, I do not know. It may take a year, couple, at least four or five years. But uh, every submission of an AQAR, they are now asking you for the evidences also. I will not be surprised that after five years, 
uh, ultimately the aqar is only one year uh, ssr self study report and you are now submitting the evidence i will not be surprised if they tell you do not submit a self study report you only give the evidences for these data points that you have given in the aqar so it is so 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 important that the aqar submission is there you are filling the best practices for your aqar in a very very efficient fashion it's not that chuma you write something as a best practice now a pagala manju versu the government pagala when they come that's not going to be the case every year you are showing a best practice it needs to have proper data proper evidences proper outcomes and so on so with that perspective i will uh, start my slide uh, sharing uh, Uh, is my uh, slide visible yes sir yes sir it's visible yeah uh, so uh, thank you for your very kind introduction and also sir uh, for your kind words uh, so it's been a very uh, a journey full of full of ups and downs almost uh, 14 years uh, taking care of the iqac three cycles uh, multiple uh, uh, good and bad experiences so as to speak but it has been a learning curve and um, it's been a learning curve in the sense that every single um, see we may agree or disagree with the parameters of accreditation and ranking i'm sure uh, you know dr nyanshekar with his vast experience agrees with me some of the metrics are not customized for private universities like vinayaka mission or amrita or srm or vit or shastra they are tailor made rankings especially are tailor made for iits unfortunately and uh, we cannot compete with them on that plat platter but still uh, the the fact is that every ranking exercise every accreditation exercise helps us to identify the good and bad within us we are able to identify what is good in us what are our strengths what are our weaknesses what are the opportunities and what are the threats so that looking inward exercise is perhaps the greatest take away from um, uh, the any ranking or accreditation exercise why i am saying i am very thankful for the kind words that uh, we are uh, well we are good rank we are a benchmark institution i am very proud but it has had its share of ups and downs and every single ranking exercise every single accreditation exercise we have been benchmarking you know after the first cycle we had a target we benchmark second cycle we improved the benchmark to a better institution third cycle we again improved the benchmark to a better institution so every single time we have been trying to look inwards look at our faults look at our strengths and see how where do we want to be and i'm so happy to note that you are already on to that path of benchmarking so that uh, you go and my uh, my uh, all my very best wishes and support that you get the best possible grade in your next cycle now yeah so uh, uh, we are uh, our uh, university the chancellor uh, is a world renowned humanitarian leader uh, shri mata amritanandamayi devi who is uh, uh, fondly known as amma to all her millions of devotees so she plays an active role in guiding the university to uh, by uh, articulating a vision for the society and uh, as far as our university is concerned the three pillars of the vision uh, i'll tell you why i'm talking about this the three pillars of the our vision are vision and mission are on the three aspects one is education for life compassion driven res uh, uh, research and approach and global impact now why i'm talking about this is that your best practices have to have a alignment and connect with your vision and mission as a number one most important thing when you are looking at best practices innovative practices um, uh, your institutional distinctiveness maybe the mark is 50 60 or 70 marks i don't know maybe 50 marks or 70 marks or whatever but actually speaking the best practices of the institutions are like a window to the institution and even though the mark may may be 50 marks 5% of the grade or 10% of the grade they play a very important role 
to give you an overall perspective of the institution. And here I want to also stress that the best practices have to be aligned with the vision and mission. Rather, I will rephrase it, the best practices are uh, like a booster dose for the institution to move towards attaining the mission and the vision of the institution. It is the best practices that give the booster. You have so many activities in an academics, administration, whatever, but it is this best practices that are kind of the showcasing. So your best practices, your innovative practices must align with the vision and mission of the institution. Number one, please note that. All our uh, best practices, whenever we, uh, we, uh, we look at a best practice. Now I am talking, I know you are a very big group with so many institutions. We are very similar. Whether it is engineering college or medical college or Ayurveda college or arts college sitting in Mysore. See, we are a very big university. We have eight campuses, close to 30, 35 schools, um, all disciplines except law, more than 250 programs. 25,000 students and almost 2,000 faculty. So anywhere and everywhere, whichever school, it doesn't matter. When we are talking of a best practice, we, we see whether does it align to the mission and the vision of the university. So this is something, is the first thing that we know. And this is, uh, as Sir has mentioned, we have got a lot of very good recognitions globally and internationally. Now, <coughs> First takeaway is your vision and mission, your innovative practices, your best practices should align to the vision and the mission of the university, number one. Now, we, we tend to always confuse ourselves. What is a best practice? Many of us do not even understand what it is. Unfortunately, people do not understand that. People think best practice is something you have just started some time back and you know you have some small result and so on. It is nothing by, but far from the truth. A best practice, already I told you number one, best practice has to align with the vision and the mission. A best practice has to have be running has to be in existence, has to be in vogue for at least two to five years, ideally three to five years, only then you get the results that are needed for a best practice. You cannot say, I started something yesterday, it's my best practice. That's not a best practice. <coughs> best practice has to be running at least for minimum two to five, two years I think is needed for a best practice to run its course, to go through its life cycle. Ideally, you need minimum three, two, two to three years is needed for getting the results. Five years is a good, uh, is a good uh, kind of a, uh, a frame of reference. So first, best practice aligned to vision and mission. Second point, best practice should be running at least for two to five, three to five years, ideally. It has to be in existence for a finite, good, significant period of Number three, most important, a best practice should have clear, measurable outcomes. This people do not understand. I, uh, I um, uh, when I say clear, measurable outcomes, see, outcomes can be quantitative, can also be qualitative. But we have to be very clear when we say measurable outcomes. I'll give you an example. You started a life skill or a soft skill program in your university. All students are going through a credit course of say one credit or two credits for improving their placement. Good. It, the credit course has been going on for two years or three years. This many batches of students have taken this credit course. That is the uh, that, that is the practice of the best practice or the innovative practice. Now the thing is, 
how do you measure the outcomes? Oh, my placement increased from 50% to 70% to a 75%. Yes, that is a measurable outcome. But that alone <coughs> will not suffice for a best practice. You need to have a multi-dimensional outcome. Only then you can call it a best practice. Just because placement improved doesn't mean it is because of the life skill course. It could be that your placement improved but because you called on local companies and the local companies improved your placement. That's not the thing. So your outcome has to be measurable in multiple dimensions. Now, now I am rephrasing the same thing. My placement improved from 50 to 60 to 75 percent in three years. Number of companies increased from 15 to 40 companies. Number of MNCs, multinational corporations uh, who came for placement increased from 5 to 15. Average CTC, cost to the company compensation increased from 3 lakhs to 5 lakhs. Now it makes sense. Yes or no? It doesn't it now make sense that yes, you started a life skill, pro, soft skill program three years back and see the multi-dimensional improvement in your placement. It's not only in terms of numbers of placement, but the quality of placement, the um, in terms of the salary, in terms of the MNCs coming in, in terms of all these things. So uh, best practice and innovative practice should have multi-dimensional outcomes. This is the three important things that you keep in mind before you go for an innovative practice, before you go for an, a best practice. I will repeat again what it is. Number one, innovative practice, best practice should be aligned to the vision and the mission. Number two, innovative practice or best practice should have been in uh, existence and running minimum three years to five years, one cycle of NAC. Number three, innovative practice or best practice should have clear, measurable outcomes in various dimensions and not only one single dimension. This is the same for <coughs> institute distinctiveness. Institute distinctiveness is also another best practice. So these are the three important things that you keep in mind before you select an innovative practice, before you select a best practice. Alignment to vision and mission of the best practice. At least run the best practice for three to five years. And finally, the best practice should have clear, measurable, multidimensional outcomes which can be measured. Moving forward, before that, any, uh, this is a global best practice or a global, uh, this is my slide. Every single presentation I have the slide, whatever be, whether it is NAC, NBA, NARF, or it doesn't matter. Document, document, document. Document, document, document. This is from a statistician in God we trust, but for everything else we need data. That's the First part of a quotation, uh, which a math mathematics professor in your midst will uh, understand this part. A statistician will understand this. In God we trust, but for everything else, we need data. But I have added my take. And that data needs to be supported by evidence. Anything you do, a everything you do, whether you are an engineering college, a medical college, a pharmacy college, a physical education college, doesn't matter. Anything and everything, keep proper documents, evidences supporting anything and everything. Academics, administration, finance, it doesn't matter. I'm not only talking about NAC, whether it is NBA, whether it is NARF, uh, whether it is um, rankings, international rankings, it doesn't matter. Now, I will again tell you why. <coughs> With NEP coming, I already told you upfront that there is a chance that all these bodies are going to be subsumed, are going to be combined, are going to be in the umbrella fashion. But when that is going to happen, 
they are going to ask you for uh, the all the bodies are going to ask you mostly for what is known as a self uh, what is that a uh, self compliance means what i'm trying to tell you is that act may not visit your university medical council of india what is that nmc national medical council may not even visit your institution pharmacy council may not come but you will be ha having something like a self compliance where anything and everything that you are doing will should be available on the public domain on the website which can be used for the compliances and only deviations in these compliances there may be visits so what i'm trying to say is that moving forward i cannot but stress upon the need for having supporting documents files evidences for anything and everything please keep make that culture i'm sure you're doing it but i want to stress <clears throat> today nac itself has moved on to an evidence based approach you go online you put all your stuff they do a dvv and uh, when there is a deviation they ask you some queries now it's likely to going to be i have a feeling it's going to be a 100% dvv for anything and everything it is not really act ugc Uh, ministry of education uh, nac nirf nba it doesn't matter it's going to be like that uh, assume that everything is going to be a 100% dvv so that you need to keep those evidences supporting anything and everything you do this is something even though i'm slightly diverting from the talk of best practices i want you to stress on this and i al also want to impress upon you that it is very important that you keep these uh, even for the best practices i told you best practice has to align to vision and mission best practice has to be running for 3 to 5 years best practice has to be um, multi having measurable and multi dimensional outcomes these outcomes needs clear evidences to support so you should have multi dimensional evidences also to support your best practices now i will uh, showcase some of the <laughs> best practices that we at uh, amrita vishwavidyalaya pedam have been doing which have definitely helped us in some way to you know emerge as the uh, top private university in india and fifth best in the nirf uh, and uh, a plus plus grade so everybody talks about obe everybody knows obe is now mandated by everybody whether it is uh, engineering even arts and science humanities everybody is going for obe but how to implement obe that is a million dollar question people grapple from pillar to post to understand how to implement it who should implement it should should it be the iqac should it be a committee should it be the dean should it be the director well the the very idea the essence of outcome based education is decentralization empowering the teachers empowering the department empowering the faculty and the uh, the, the way to do having centralized approaches for obe uh, are very likely to end up in failure the best way is to go for a decentralized approach why i am saying is i went through this process i went through failure starting obe process in 2016 or 15 late 15 we started until 2017 a highly centralized process it was not working i'm i'm not saying it was like uh, uh, it was not perfect it was not working clearly until we decided to flip it and make it a completely decentralized process the the, the department is uh, see earlier as iqac head i was running behind departments give me your uh, minutes give me your minutes of obe attainments i was running from pillar to post uh, behind this and one fine morning we decided see we are not going to uh, do any central uh, this thing it is the responsibility of the department department can constitute what is known as an academic advisory committee this is also uh, recommended by national board of accreditation at this decentralized approach the idea is that the dac committee within a department will take the complete 
ownership of the OBE process. That is the context of this thing. And you, you, you are free to have an external expert in this DAC committee. And the DAC committee elicits the department vision and mission, uh, um, formulates the PEOs. I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not telling you what you know what a PEO is. Uh, and, uh, doing the mapping of the PO and the PSO to the CEO. Uh, 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 works with the board of studies, gives inputs to the board of studies in the curriculum and design, monitors the teaching learning process, does all the calculations of the attainment calculations at the CEO level and mapping, then the PO and PSO level, formulates the rubrics for labs, mini projects, uh, pro major projects, um, formulates the guidelines for mobility of the students, and focuses on continuous learning. So the entire end-to-end -end responsibility of the OBE implementation in any department is squarely flipped back to the department, to the structure, Department Academic Advisory Committee. Last four years, it's been running, even during COVID times, it's been running very meticulously. As IQAC head, if you ask me, I don't have any of those attainments. It's there with the department. I don't uh, interfere in them. Of course, they call me and ask me, sir, I want some help on formulating rubrics on mini projects. Can you get me somebody? I, I do that part. Uh, sir, we have a lot of new faculty coming up. Please give them uh, some sort of uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, training on this aspect of OB. Those kind of things IQAC supports. But otherwise, the entire implementation is decentralized, empowered to the department. And the DAC, they do their academic audits. Uh, they have multiple, um, uh, actually, um, uh, the, uh, the class committee meetings uh, kind of also do something similar, but the, the DAC conducts audits uh, on, um, do, perhaps the DAC meets, if I'm not mistaken, twice in a semester. At the beginning of the semester, uh, mid-semester, uh, sorry, beginning of the semester and towards the end of the semester. So uh, the DAC meets twice in a semester, looks at the uh, completion of the syllabus, how it is vis-a-vis -vis the expected and the uh, completion, looks at all the attainment calculations from the internal assessment, the, the periodical exams, their question papers, and then before the end semester exam, uh, gives uh, makes its report. So there is actually an attainment calculation that is happening even before the end of the course. After the periodical exams, the quizzes and all, some sort of attainment is the calculations are taken and they are implemented, they are executed and they are analyzed. Perhaps this happens around towards the fag end of the semester. Before the semester begins and somewhere in the middle, uh, middle to end of the semester, this is what is happening. And now, as I mentioned you, <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Outcome, uh, all undergraduate programs uh, in our university campus in Coimbatore, BTEC programs have been accredited. Other campuses also, this has happened. In Bangalore campuses, half the programs have been accredited. By middle of this year, uh, 2023, all the, uh, at least half the undergraduate programs of um, uh, are going to be accredited at the Amritaburi campus in Kerala. So this, this has put us in a cycle of continuous, and, and uh, believe me, a lot of heavy lifting now is done by the department. The DAC takes care of that complete process in terms of the, uh, the uh, what is that, the effective implementation. So it is empowerment, it is, implement, it is a decentralization and so on. Uh, so this is one one practice that is kind of uh, merging criterion one and two. Now I go to another best practice, uh, more related to research. The I want to stress upon the focus of about having what is known as a publication coordinator. In every department, we have implemented this for the last uh, seven eight years. We have been implementing this now. <laughs> I'm sure as a multi uh, multi camp multi school uh, university, there are many constituent uh, constituent institutions of Vinayaga Mission University. Every college there are faculty, thousands of faculty are there. Now I'm sure Dr. Nyanashekar will agree with me that the importance of having affiliation 
in all the publications of the uh, consistency affi affiliation consistency of all the publications by the faculty of Pinayaga is very important. And for this practice only, we have a publication coordinator. In our university, there is a mandatory research uh, publication requirement for faculty. Uh, well, we can argue for and against this, but anyway, the rule is there. Uh, uh, the, for a mandatory requirement is there PG, uh, PG students, irrespective of the degree that they are studying, uh, um, they, they have to have a publication if they want to get their degree. It is mandatory. I think a few uh, exceptions have only been given in some very few cases like, you know, MA English literature like that. Very few postgraduate programs, only this exception has been given. For UG students also, if they want a distinction, it is not that they get this 9.59 CGPA, they need to also have a publication. So, uh, and another important aspect of the context is that uh, uh, the IQAC folks will agree with me that, you know, all these Scopus and Web of Science publications, they don't ask you, none of the agencies, whether it is NAC, NBA, NARF, Times Higher Education, Kwakarali Simons, Shanghai Geotong rankings, they do not ask you for that. They directly go to Scopus or PubMed or uh, Science, what is that, Web of Science, uh, Web of Science, and pull your publications directly. That is why, in, uh, so all the bibliometrics for the uh, ascertaining the quantity and the quality of publications are taken directly from these indexing agencies. There is no submission. It's a very problematic, serious thing. Because now you have to ensure every student, every PG student, every UG student, every research scholar, every faculty across different disciplines, different colleges, different constituent institutions have the same affiliation for each and every publication. That is why we brought this practice of a <coughs> publication coordinator. Publication coordinator is a nodal officer in every department. Now, I'm very proud that <coughs> this was implemented. This is a suggestion that went from the IQAC side that, uh, you know, this is very serious. And um, because uh, at, a, at an administrative uh, level decision, uh, we are more looking at Scopus. Uh, uh, Science Citation Index and Web of Science, uh, some researchers are working on that, but that is more at a uh, research center level. More, all the faculty, the general common denominator is Scopus. So the publication coordinator does multiple things. Keeping track of all the Scopus Index journals and conferences, relevant to the area of research of the department, disseminating this to all the faculty, students, UG, PG, research scholars, everybody, checking indexing status. Sometimes uh, things come out of Scopus. When the conference is published, uh, is uh, circulated or publicized, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> when the conference is publicized, it will be in Scopus, but after that, when you publish it, they'll say it has come out. All those issues are there. But it is the job of the publication coordinator to keep track of that, ensuring that uh, public every publication uh, from the department, whether it is by a UG or a PG student or a UG student or a research scholar or a uh, faculty, has to go through the Turnitin uh, report uh, that is ensured by this publication coordinator. If the publication coordinator also ensures there is a form to be filled for publication. Now it is online. Earlier it used to be physical, uh, but that uh, publication uh, form has to give the correct affiliation, uh, has to be given in there. And uh, uh, those kind of things are taken care by the publication coordinator. Publication coordinator also fixes the target for the department in association with the HOD of the department. And the, uh, also uh, publication coordinator keeps the reports of all these uh, things. Because there is actually a tracking. May not the tracking is not happening maybe at a quarterly level. At least once in a year, the university administration will say this department or school has given a target of this many papers. And this is the actual, uh, so that gap 
uh, is sometimes there is a gap sometimes there is more uh, no gap all those things is the responsibility of the obligation coordinator so it's a very good practice that has been going on uh, that's what turn it in uh, ensuring the thing and uh, if you see this uh, of course i have not updated this uh, now i i can tell you uh, it's not if you see this chart uh, in 2014 14 out of the we lost many publications lost publications in the sense that affiliation was wrongly put and we lost those publications somebody puts um, see again when you are writing a paper you submit to a journal the journal also has its own a uh, way of reckoning but the last field should be the university name department names college names don't really matter our last affiliation should be the affiliation field so uh, this number if you see i have actually lost publications because it's not that our numbers actually i have lost publications here i have lost publications the affiliation was wrong i lost that but then moving forward the numbers have come up because the uh, the um, uh, we are ensuring now i think at least there is a 99% uh, 98 to 97% compliance see some junior faculty makes a mistake in the spelling you know we lose the publication right so those kind of things are uh, there so this is a best practice that uh, has happened in research in a very uh, efficient uh, fashion and uh, again i am reiterating publication is not, you are not giving anything they are pulling it out so it's very very important and serious issue now coming to the uh, criterion 6 best practice so i have given you a uh, dac is 1 and 2 department academic advisory committee Uh, for implementing the end to end obe process publication coordinator is criterion 3 this is criterion 6 a nodal office for ranking accreditation and certifications it is the iqac that has to do this we have implemented this from uh, again i told you we have multiple campuses multiple schools in seven different cities and they are all geographically distributed not in one location so very big challenge uh, especially so what we have done is we have uh, made the iqac as the nodal office for anything related to accreditation and ranking so many rankings are coming magazine rankings are there um, um, nir of ranking is there very difficult you know so at the university level we have uh, made a The rule that you know, no, uh, only we are going to participate in three rankings. Uh, that is the THE ranking, the QS ranking, and the NIR of ranking. No school or constituent campus is allowed to go for uh, is allowed permitted to go for any other special uh, magazine ranking or other ranking. If they want to do, they can. They have to get specific uh, guidance from uh, approval from the board of management for that. so that has narrowed the focus so all the faculty are only focusing on these three four things and the iqac uh, see many people complain iqac is only keeping files it, it is not so iqac is a very important appendage of the university iqac may not be able to do financial audit or financial planning or strategic planning may be done at the board of management or at the management level but iqac can be very very actively engaging in the institution by taking care of all the activities pertaining to the ranking accreditation certification affiliation iqac can be the nodal agency that is collecting uh, collecting coll uh, collating consolidating curating and submitting both data and evidences for all departments centers institutions schools and colleges so iqac has been empowered to be this nodal office and the iqac coordinator is given the raw, uh, job there is no, there is not that one person is different same per person has been given this job of coordinating for everything the one stop data and uh, evidences of the department and accordingly in each department the iqac coordinator or the head has been given uh, points for the appraisal 
uh, uh, because this job is very important. It's not, it's a very important responsibility. In some cases, depending upon the school or the college, they have been given uh, workload reduction, but that's the decision of the individual principal of the school to take a decision. But like as a university coordinator, I only take one course per semester. I, I mean, I, last time I took more because I wanted to, but I don't actually need to even take a single course. I'm, I'm free to take, not take a single course also. I can sit, sit without taking courses. But that kind of flexibility is given and the IQAC coordinators are empowered because they have to do everything with re respect to ranking and accreditation, NAC, NARF, THE, QS, NBA, and so on. And, uh, you know, uh, you know as, as I told you, result has been by the grace of God, we have been doing very well. Uh, and the IQAC coordinators have played a very important role in this transformation of uh, Amrita into the top private university in India. Yeah, these are the things that we are taking care of at the IQAC level, NAC, NBA, AACSB is for uh, business school, NABL is for medical uh, school, pharmacy school. Uh, the others are kind of common. We also started a, at the Coimbatore campus, we are very actively engaging in this green campus initiative also. Uh, uh, the green campus, uh, we have taken it into a very big way. Um, uh, we are working with the university, the facilities uh, to properly document all the green practices in the university. With ours is a, Paimbutur campus is a very, uh, what should I say, very eco-friendly green campus. But somehow we have, uh, we have not been able to tap it much. But we have been doing well by uh, working, documenting with the facilities and there is a campus director. We I work closely with them to get the documentation with the practices, you know, and uh, whether it is switch rankings, AACT smart and green campus rankings, district, um, district champion ranking of uh, Ministry of Education. So many things we are doing and uh, the results have been very, very good. Actually, um, four years back, I only went and uh, collected the certificate from the uh, on behalf of the university. This initiative is also going on well. One more thing that we have done is uh, having the doc uh, documentation. Um, I, I told you, you know, in God we trust, but for everything else we need data. And uh, that data needs to be supported by evidence. So we are maintaining these documents very meticulously. There is a defined set at the university level, at the campus level at the school level, at the department level. And uh, this is given to each and every department. Uh, I would have wanted to do more than this, but once in a year, I ensure I may not do an academic and administrative audit every year. To be very honest with you, we are only able to do once in two or three years and a full-fledged academic and administrative audit because the focus is on research and other things. But every single year, I ensure at least in the Coimbatore campus, I do a documentation audit once in a year, at least some cases twice in a year, where every department, every department means academic department, as well as the non-administrative academic departments like finance, HR, uh, um, sports, physical education, students welfare, hostel administration, all the uh, clinic. There also we do a documentation audit at least once in a year. I want to do more, but it's not, uh, unfortunately, it's not happening. But meticulously every year we are doing this uh, documentation audit. AAA, ideally want to do every year, but sometimes it's not very practical, you know, very tough nowadays. Finally, uh, the last best practice is engaging the students into these, um, you know, green initiatives. So this is a new program which we have started for all the first years called Alive. All first years will be uh, working on some social activity. It's been going on for three years now. Of course, during the pandemic two years, we couldn't do it physically. Uh, so all first years are put into one of the activities, social societal activities, which includes afforestation, cleanup, um, you know, water harvesting, uh, awareness programs in the villages near our campus, connecting with the NSS, uh, unit, organic farming, and so on. All first years have been mapped into that, and that's going on. We are now, uh, we have worked out a point system whereby we give grace marks based on this uh, activity for ally. So if a student has done 
very well he may get up to uh, up to 10 grace marks he can add those marks can be added and his grade in one or two subjects can be increased so those kind of things we are already doing uh, so these are the just a glimpse of some of the best practices i close with this that you know excellence is a journey not a destination my best wishes to uh, vinayaga mission for your climb towards excellence and greater heights i know you are already doing very well but wish you the best for uh, moving uh, ahead thank you very much over to over to the organizers thank you sir i'm sorry a little cough is there yesterday delhi a day before yesterday yesterday morning delhi airport was so cold <laughs> yeah very yeah. sorry for my <laughs> throat <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, someone wants to raise questions, you can just put it in the QA box or the chat box so that we can ask him. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Prashant, I just want, I have a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Uh, one is the DAC. Uh, here, the, the DAC in Amrita, you follow it uh, school-wise or every department has one? Sir, department wise, school level we used, uh, we used to have something, but uh, like IQAC was taking the, the role of the DAC. Uh, so we have like 14 uh, departments in the campus, centers and departments running courses. It was a, uh, it was a pain because, you know, 14 different uh, hundreds of courses, uh, they will submit to me, but, you know, at my level, it was not possible. Uh, so uh, we flipped it to the department and some departments have even got a, external member to help them, some departments, because they need that support or that uh, hand holding. And, but all these attainment reports, you know, at the end of the semester, the, I think every semester end, there will be a DAC minutes, big document, 30, 40 pages. Uh, some of them, even now they send it to me. So I file it in the department, in the IQAC. And uh, similarly, this publication coordinator. Yes, sir. Again, this will be at the the school level or uh, ah, so that is there there is something at the department level and the school level uh, because uh, the, the school level there is a there is a lot of reporting with respect to the publications because from vice chancellor's office they will go on asking uh, at the school level campus level how many papers so uh, each department has a coordinator at the school level also uh, there is a coordinator actually she is an administrative staff not a teaching faculty but she does that overall, what is that, uh, management also with the Scopus IDs of every faculty. She has that. She also uh, keeps track of this. But th that is only at the data consolidation, data collection stage. The department level, it is a faculty because the faculty will only be able to look at journals, conferences and all. So there is a dual school and department. And about this... Uh... You got uh, talking about 10 grace marks. Uh, is it possible in uh, <laughs> programs like uh, medicine, engineering, uh, arts and science is okay, moderation is okay, but in uh, programs like medicine, dentistry, uh, how is it possible? I think what they have done is, uh, see, then medicine also, there are, you can't touch anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and all. But there are some uh, courses, you no know, add-on courses that we can add. I think some yoga and all. No, some courses are yeah, but there. But uh, those don't uh, have credits, you no. Know? As I understand, for the gold medal and all, uh, maybe from a medical council of India, those things are there. But these things factor uh, when they are mm -hmm. awarding the gold medal and all. No, they are adding this component. I, I'm not exactly sure. In engineering, uh, humanities, arts, sciences, we are adding the grace mark. In the statutory body programs, I don't think you can add it to the mark of anatomy, but when you are You're deciding right. to give a gold medal, those these marks are added and uh, uh, that gold medal is given to the person who does these act. Something like that is there. Okay. Sir, uh, excuse me, sir. Sir, proceed, sir, proceed. Yeah, you got it. Yes, sir. Sir, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Sir, actually, I'm having one doubt, sir, because every year we are submitting a QR. Yeah. 
so every year we have to we need to change the best practices because in your presentation at least two years we have to practice any best practices so i i my this is my opinion see yeah. every year you are submitting a best practice it, it is better to change it every year but what you can do is see you need to identify in all criteria so this yes. year you are giving say two best practices one in criteria and one and two and that has to be running for two to three years. Then only you will get the data. Next year you change it with something else that you have been doing. You're, you're a big university with so many activities, right? So yeah. better have a best practice changing every year. In the end, I'll tell you the advantage. When you are going for NAC, I don't know whether in 2027 or 28, you will have a SSR. My gut feeling is they are just going to use you. You may have 10 or 12 best practices. You have a pool of best practices. If, if there is a self-study report, you can choose the most impactful of them. Two of them or three of them. If you are not having an SSR, uh, they still all these will be there. So uh, there are some places which they are not able to do. In such cases, I have told them to repeat. Means they don't have anything to show. They have only the same best practices. So this AQR, they show the best practice. Next year also they show, because they don't have anything to show. Okay. Such cases uh, you are constrained, but in your case, that such an issue is there. I am changing it every year because I have enough best practices. Uh, somebody is coming and telling me placement. I have done this. I show that as a best practice this year, and he has data for three years. Next year, I show some social initiative. The year after that, I show a green initiative. I showed you know sustainability and green initiative. Outcomes are there. Uh, Swachh Bharat ranking district. There are outcomes are there. So, uh, when you are choosing, please be focusing also on the outcomes. That is also very important. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry. Don't have uh, any questions. So. There's no questions as there, sir. So can... Can okay, can, yeah, yes, proceed. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting you in person, Yanishekar, sir. Sure, sure, anytime. Yeah, yeah proceed, madam. Unmute, unmute yourself. Thank you so much for your fabulous presentation, sir. This presentation really makes us to learn in the topic of quality benchmarking by innovative practices. Now, I would like to invite Mr. N. Nityanand sir, IQSC coordinator of Vinayaka Mission College of Physical Education, Sela, to deliver the vote of thanks. <laughs> 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 It's my great pleasure to propose vote of thanks on this occasion, which of Vinayaka Mission College of Physical Education, Sela. First, I would like to thank our management for providing such a wonderful platform to conduct this one-day webinar quality benchmarking by innovative class in grand successful way. Next, I would like to express my gratitude to our today research person, Dr. R. Prasan Nayar, who ready to accept our invitation and to share the knowledge with us. On behalf of our management, our institution, and my own behalf of, I extend my heartful thank you to you, sir. Next, I would like to express my gratitude to our today uh, university IKC director, Professor Dr. P. Nayanasagar, sir, who always support and guide us to learn new things. Mm -hmm. On behalf of everyone and my own behalf, of, I extend my thank to you, sir. Next, I would like to express my gratitude to our beloved principal, Dr. E. Saranan, sir, in this occasion. He is man all who always support us to reach higher position in our career. On behalf of everyone and my own behalf, of, I express my thank to you, sir. Next, I like to thank all directors, HOAs, IQC coordinator, and faculties of our Constitution College for this occasion. Next, I like to thank our IT team for supporting to conduct the A1 in grand success. Next, I would like to thank participation of this one day webinar. Once again, thank you to one another. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for your valuable presence and support.
thank you thank you very much thank, thank you, you all thank you thank you sir feedback link is in uh, comment box uh, chat box kindly uh, put your feedback sir so thank you sir thank you thank you sharavan sir thank you sir thank you sir bye sir i'll try to meet you sir in uh, absolutely please come yeah, yeah. i also okay. okay yes sir thank you sir